Ooh, looky looky, here's a game that's creamed my cookie. This little bargain managed to slip through the net once before, but I found it again while doing my usual dumpster diving in the sales. But I think this time round though, it's even cheaper than the last time I saw it. Currently, it is 64 pence on the PS4. Reus, or is it Reus? Either way it's pronounced, the title always reminds me to reuse plastic bags. Reus is a god sim where we play as the big cheese itself, but in the game we control four giants. We're basically the puppet master, but we're also the puppet, because even though we're playing god, our objectives are handed down to us. Not only that, but we also don't have any power in creating our own objectives. That doesn't really sound like a situation a god would be in. So from this, I've drawn up my conclusion that in reality, we're somewhere in middle management. Sorry to ruin that positive illusion for you straight out of the gate, but that's just how it is. Our predetermined objective in the game is to provide resources for people so they can use them to prosper. But we have a limited amount of time we can provide these resources before our giants need to go to sleep. I think as god we use this as a cop out excuse to go tinker with our better performing projects, switching between the deism and theism approach as and when it suits us. I suppose that's one of the perks of being a boss. Each of our puppet giants provides a platform for life to start from. From there we wait hand and foot on people, because no other creatures were given the intellect to understand the concept of god or death. Therefore no other creature can kiss ass quite like humanity that we know of. I have to wonder, was that an oversight in the master plan? Because one thing that's always perplexed me about people's interpretation of god or gods is that a god needs their ego constantly stroked by lesser beings. It's something I find baffling because why would an almighty powerful god be so insecure? The fact is, this is just people giving themselves the power to determine what happens to them after death. It's as asinine as flat earthers and still believe in the sun orbits around the earth. It's actually a form of self-deception to follow what others believe about mortality and what happens afterwards. The real sad consequence of this self-deception is that people ignorantly deny themselves part of the human experience based on what other people believe. Anyway, once the babies have established themselves, they will start projects that need X amount of resources to complete them. It is our job to figure out how to provide them with the resources they need. Essentially, this is the main component of the game. The difficulty comes when trying to maximise the resources with the limited amount of space we are given. I somewhat struggled to do this as some of the projects needed way more resources than I could provide. I'm not sure if this is because the game is using a poor RNG system to choose the projects or if I'm just shit at the game. Either way, when these projects came up I got into the habit of destroying the camps that were asking way too much of me. I must admit I destroyed them out of nothing but sheer spite. This really is a god sim. That'll teach them for wanting to build schools, the bastards. In any case, figuring out how to provide the resources is where the game gets interesting, as there's quite a few systems the game uses to boost the stats of resources. Some of them are simple, like planting a particular plant next to another plant. Others need a giant's ability to transform a resource into something else, like transforming a clownfish into a parrotfish. The reward for doing all of this is that we're given more abilities, which are used to provide higher yielding resources. All in all, that's the game. It's pretty good at what it does, and at the moment it offers ridiculous value for someone who's into these kind of games. The only major issue I had with this game is the modes that are provided, because to progress through the game you have to play a 30 minute era mode. When you have achieved enough objectives you then lock an hour era mode, and subsequently the two hour era mode. The problem I have with this setup is that there is a free mode which I would much prefer to play in, but it offers no progression. I really like the free mode because it gives me the time to casually learn everything and mess about, whereas in the timed mode I played like a headless chicken for the most part because of the pressure of doing as much as possible within the time limit. For me, this is where the game missed the mark because I wanted to casually play this game chilled out, throwing it on every now and then to slowly progress through the game in my own time. The deflating thing I found about the progressive time mode is that once it's over, you have to start it again from the beginning. I don't understand why they didn't have the free mode as a main story mode, because the free mode doesn't offer any advantages apart from not having the annoying timed element. But what it does offer is much more freedom. I mean, they still could have included the timed era mode, but simply have it as an optional challenge mode. Initially, I was a bit disappointed about the focus on humanity prospering, because I was hoping for something more along the lines of Viva Piñata, with the overall objective of increasing biodiversity. Now, I suppose the game does kind of have that, but it's all for humanity's sake. 
This is where the other element of the game comes in. Because humans are inherently greedy, they drain resources, always demanding for more. They do this to the point that everything is not enough, so they have to go kill other people for more. I simply put this down to progression, or survival of the fittest. According to the description of the game, I have the power to stop war, but why the hell would I go and do something stupid like that for? I'm god after all, it's not my place to sort that mess out. So I always left the petty mortals to their squabbles. Conveniently, another perk of being a boss is not being on the front lines or being held accountable. But if you are foolish enough to try and intervene with the ravenous mortals, they will thank you by raging war against the giants. Because there is literally nothing that exists that people don't want to kill at least once even if it's the hand that feeds. Apart from the few things I've mentioned, overall I'm happy that I managed to pick this game up. It has a nice art style and interesting mechanics which kept me engaged with it. 